Hello, my name is Omar Ambassad. It's 3.27 p.m. June 27, 2019. So I tweeted a bunch of tweets on R-O-S-H-I-N-I-911, and last time I checked, those were mine. My Twitter account is hacked. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk today about um, uh, a pullout for a mental evaluation that happened um, approximately 10 years ago. Um, I can't remember the exact year, but uh, maybe it's less than that. I have to check the dates on the documents. Um, so when it happened, it uh, completely took me by surprise. I was shocked. Um, I was, uh, you know, I, it took me a long time to get over what happened, years. Uh, and I'm not over it. Um, so, as I said, it happened a, a few years ago. So, since then, um, I've been harassed and I've been stalked and um, I've been um, like gang stalked and uh, uh, charged for something I didn't do uh, and uh, being constantly harassed outside the window in directed conversations that's intended to let me know what is going on, to terrorize me. So from all the harassing comments, this is what um, I uh, strongly believe happened. I was flagged by somebody in this building. Um, it could have been a person from the board of directors back then, maybe even the president. And uh, there was a team of people that were following me around. Uh, in retrospect, there were um, certain people who were parked in the underground who were constantly around me no matter what time I came in. So I was working full time and going to university taking uh, night courses. So I'd be coming in late at night, 12 o'clock sometimes. Took me two hours to get home from downtown. In winter time, it could be more because I'd have to scrape, uh, you know, sometimes three inches of ice off my car that was parked in the, in the train lot. And um, before I and heat it up and uh, clear ice around my car before I could drive out. So it sometimes I came home at one o'clock in the night uh, or I'd be uh, working late or uh, if I went to dinner, I'd eat. So I had come in late. Uh, I had a active, very active lifestyle. Um, so uh, I'm suspecting that um, Traffickers who infiltrated the building had me flagged based on these um, these observations that were normal everyday observations. There was absolutely nothing criminal about it, but they painted it in such a way that it looked like um, I was coming in late, so maybe I was a prostitute, and I uh, just um, got a huge pulse of pain on my head. And there you go, right there. So the people in this building don't want me talking. So for this to happen, I'd have to be imaged in order to pulse me in the temple and now it's off, it's gone. So uh, I'd have to be imaged, so there is no privacy. So I am being harassed this way. So I'll show you how the temperature increases. So that's 36.6. Thirty-six five. Thirty-six five. So it went up point one. So it went up point one. Thirty-five seven. So that's the here. Thirty-six four. And that's the skin. Thirty-six four. So if I place it here and get the temperature of the skin, 36.4. If I placed it on the hair, which is wet, is 25.6. So really the skin went up 0.2. So um, this is what I mean by instant feedback. So let me continue with what I was saying. Um, so I was flagged and uh, I was being monitored by a team of people who were reporting, making reports uh, taking everyday uh, um, normal um, living 
occurrences and painting them to make it look like I was a prosecutor. And they reported this to cops at the 42nd Division. And they flagged me. And uh, because I was flagged, the cops were surveilling me. But they were getting help from people in the building. They're getting reports about me. So this went on for a while. And I imagine that uh, there were um, flags and people were signing me out based on the, the harassing comments. This is what I think is happening. And still happened and it's still happening. So people were signing me out and then gathering a network of people to rotate around me, uh, to physically follow me around, and also to monitor me inside of my home. So um, this was probably happening from 2005, six. Uh, I think it was a misuse of um, the uh, surveillance that resulted from 9-11 under the Terrorism Act. This is what I'm suspecting happened. Because uh, this, uh, at the time, um, uh, the, the, the building was uh, occupied by a lot of Chinese people, but there were other people as well. But now there is hardly any non-Chinese in the building. So it could have been a racist act back then, maybe still is. Um, so the flag uh, um, uh, continued, but what I'm understanding, I, I've come to understand now, it was really a cover for sex slavery, remote sex slavery, where people with a link and a password were accessing you inside your home and gerbling you, remotely raping you, and uh, trying to get you to act out sexually so they can look and record. Um, so. As a result of all this activity, um, I suspect that Gord, the building superintendent at the time, um, uh, called the cops and worked with the three Muslim people who were around me at the time. Um, they, uh, the units around me were all occupied by Muslim people. And uh, I'm suspecting that they were actually logging into me because I'm suspecting that my name was on the list and this was going on for a while. And this, this, the word spreads mouth to mouth about whose uh, names are on the list and who are accessed with a link and a password. So people buy um, or rent around the person who's on the list and access them. In other words, they make them into some sort of a sex slave, accessing them remotely inside of your home. So. Uh, so let's get back to the pullout, the environmental evaluation. So I'm suspecting that Gord, who was holding the receipt, or somebody else, uh, maybe on the board of directors, uh, who was uh, working with the cops to lie and provide misinformation to flag, um, uh, called the cops several times. And then eventually the cops decided that they're going to pull me out. So. They came, I'm suspecting, and hung around. I was at home. And uh, I walked in. I was out with uh, a girlfriend. And uh, I think we went to a movie and we had lunch and we came in. Um, and uh, as soon as I came in, a few minutes later, there was a knock on my door. And uh, the, the two six feet officers were standing there. And one of them said, we're going to take you to the hospital. No questions, no explanations. So I said, why? And I stepped out of the corridor. I said, why? Um, no explanations. We're going to take you to the hospital. This is not an arrest. We're going to take you to, to the hospital. So I was, bare, I was uh, on my, in my socks uh, in the corridor. And I turned instinctively. I put my hand on the, on the handle of the door uh, to turn it to come back in to put my shoes on. I was dressed. Uh, um, you know, uh, perfectly well. Um, I was. I had absolutely nothing in my hand. Absolutely nothing in my hand. Um, and uh, as soon as I put my hand on the door to come back in uh, to get my shoes, because you know, two officers show up at my door and say you're gonna. Uh, it didn't explain why. And I had absolutely no contact with cops before. Absolutely. Other than getting uh, uh, um, a, a couple of speeding ticket, tickets, driving, I had absolutely no contact with the police, none whatsoever. Um, uh, as soon as I put my hand on the, the handle to come back in, 
the two came on both sides, lifted me up. Well, maybe one of them, I think. I'm sorry. Um, one of them lift, uh, uh, pulled me, pulled my hand off, lifted me up, and then uh, uh, slammed me against the wall. Like my, uh, my shoulders were sore for weeks. Pulled the cuffs out, pulled my hand roughly behind my, my back, and cuffed me. Then both officers on both sides of me lifted me off. I'm four feet eleven, and they were over six feet tall. And I just got another, another uh, uh, pulse right here, and that is it right there. Um, uh, lifted me off and was started carrying me down the corridor towards the elevator. I didn't have any shoes on and I didn't have any coat on. It was winter time. Uh, so I asked for my shoes and I asked for my coat. Um, was it winter time? I don't remember the exact month. So let me uh, let me backtrack that. Um, no, uh, it wasn't. I, I can't remember the exact uh, month. It may not have been winter time. I have to check my documents on that. Uh, but uh, I didn't have my shoes on. Did not. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm confusing that with the time they actually arrested me. It was when the time of the time they actually arrested me for another charge uh, in 2016 that I did not commit. Um, and they did a, almost exactly the same thing, only this time I wasn't slammed against the wall. Uh, no, it was summertime, excuse me, when I was pulled out for the mentally foul. And, but I didn't have my shoes on, so I kept asking for my shoes. Um, I wasn't shouting. I just kept asking, could I please put my shoes on? Could I please put my shoes on? Could I please put my shoes on? And eventually, just before getting to the elevator, they turned around and came back to get my shoes. And my because my hands were cuffed, my friend actually got my shoe and slipped it on to into my um, onto my foot. And it was a closed shoe, so I had to um, I had to uh, make it into a sort of, some sort of a slipper because I couldn't get down to put my hand around the heel to get it on properly and walk me out and to the to the to the uh, the cruiser um, pushed me in the back seat and uh, for people uh, who's been on a cruiser you, you would understand that it's not meant for comfortable traveling it's meant to contain you so it's very very uncomfortable and my hands were tied be uh, cuffed behind my back I was so shocked, I was completely and utterly shocked that uh, my mouth went dry and I was actually shaking. So I asked the cop for water in the, in the car, in the cruiser. No water. Um, I, uh, um, I, they took me to the hospital and get this, they kept me in the cruiser at the entrance of the hospital and the two cop came out of the cruiser sat in front of the hospital, I swear, if there was a camera around that area, and I'm sure there is, and it was pulled, they, you would see this. They sat there and ate McDonald's. And I was in a cruiser sitting extremely uncomfortable without water after asking for water and almost passing out because I was in complete shock. They sat and they ate McDonald's in front of the, 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 um, the uh, hospital. Then they came back and got me out took me to the lobby and then asked for my health card and I said it's my bag. Oh yeah, my, my friend gave me my bag as well, my purse. And uh, I said it's, it's in my purse. And uh, so he opened the purse and he started looking and he started uh, rummaging around my bag. And I said, well, it's, if you bring the bag you know, close to me, I'll show you exactly where it is. He kind of pulled everything out uh, um, and I said, well, it's in my wallet. Uh, you know, he didn't have to go through my bag, but he did. Uh, and uh, pull out my, my uh, health card and, um, and uh, um, I, I, I'm not sure whether he was looking for ID. I, I, I'm not sure. But he pulled out my health card. I can't remember exactly what he pulled out. And uh, stayed in the lobby for about 45 minutes waiting to be um, to be admitted. Uh, again, I asked for water. And again, in the lobby in the hospital, I asked for water and they refused me. No water. 
So after waiting for 45 minutes and my, uh, you know, uh, all standing, I wasn't even sitting, standing, um, they, the, the nurse came and, and did the paperwork. And I, again, I asked for water. And she only gave me the water when the cop said, yes, she can have, she can have water. The cop refused to give me water. I could have passed out. I could have died. My heart was palpitating. I was in utter shock and under complete, at so much stress, and he refused to give me water. So eventually when he said yes, the nurse went and got a glass of water, and she put a straw in it, and she held the cup up to my mouth, and uh, then I had water. Then they took me to, into a small room, a really small room, locked the door, and we, I had two cops inside of that small room with me, monitoring me until a social worker came and asked me these silly questions to find out how alert I am. And then the cop told the, the nurse, and uh, oh, I had a doctor come in and talk to me and uh, asked me all these questions, what time it is, what day it was, whatever. Uh, and then she turned to the cop and, and asked, well, why is she here? There's nothing wrong with her. So uh, the, the, the cop then went outside and I was talking to the nurse and said, well, she was knocking on people's doors and she was walking back and forth and, and whatever else he was, he was, uh, rip, that he was told. And the neighbors lied and, and, and reported about me. What had ac actually happened was these were exactly the same things that I was complaining to the management in writing several times about several times. I was not doing it. The kids were doing it. The, the two Muslim families had teenagers and older and uh, um, a little bit older kids and maybe early 20s and they were doing it. The cop convinced the, uh, the, um, the, um, the nurse or somebody in administration to put on the forum possible delusions. I'm not quite sure what I was delusional about because the paperwork had no backup. It just said the things that the Muslim people were reporting about me and I denied and I, kept, I tried to tell the cop that there is an issue in the building. They will not listen to me. Now possible delusion, possibly delusional is not a diagnosis. It does, however, reflect the fact that the cops were trying to get me mentally committed when there was no mental illness. The doctor said to them, the, to the, the police, the two cops, there is nothing wrong with her. It was all a situation. If anything happened, it was situational. There was no mental illness. The cop convinced the clerical staff to put on the form possible delusional possibly delusional based on nothing. There was nothing about being delusional about. Knocking on doors, uh, walking back and forth is not something I did. I did not do it. And uh, uh, if somebody was actually knocking on doors and walking back and forth, does that make them delusional? Whoever the person was walking back and forth, there could be a million reasons. The person could have been investigating something or handing out something, walking back and forth and knocking on people's doors does not make anybody delusional, anyone delusional. And I'm getting upset just talking about it, as you can tell. So these, this is what happened. And now the reason I'm saying this and I'm talking about it now is that this is continuing. It's, it's happened then, it's still being done. The neighbors and the residents are still telling lies and are still trying to get me mentally committed based on set up frames and the lies that they are telling. While people like uh, people who in the workplaces are joining me and espousing me like Rick, I heard a join me. So in other words, I'm being trafficked while the push is on to get me mentally committed based on lies and frames and setups. 
So this push, the conspiracy to have me mentally committed, is part of the trafficking ring, the sex slave operation, the remote sex slave operation. And at some point, these traffickers want to turn the remote into physical. So I heard that um, from the Chinese traffickers outside the window um, that uh, Badr Nizar wanted me raped to kickstart me because I'm suspecting that Badr Nizar started publicly, publicly harassing me because he was the manager and he was telling people what to do, the team. And, and he started the public harassment that I'm documenting in, uh, on my tweets, in my tweets, on my Twitter account. And it started publicly from that point on. I think it was done covertly before that for years. But I suspect that Badr Nizar is a very important man in this sex slave operation that's going on. Talk to you another time.